let's get into it. Um, chat, this is Wreck It Raven, who was behind the major um event over the past couple weeks on Twitch, leading the conversation about uh the problems that trans and LGBT and people of color face on this platform, uh, with hate raids and uh the rampant racism on this platform. And uh we were, of course, uh, covering this story. Now, I have to admit, I am one of those people that is very skeptical of, we'll get into this more, of like, you know, the hashtag don't work on a certain day uh, movements that arise from time to time. Mm -hmm. So before we get into that, why don't you explain who you are, what you do on Twitch, and then we can get into the conversation. Sure. Uh, my name is Raven. My pronouns are they, she. Uh, I am an activist first and a content creator on Twitch. Um, I do honestly a lot of a lot of what you do. I have uncomfortable conversations with um, my community because you know I was raised not to talk about you know things that were not happy all the time, and I think a lot of people um, were raised very similarly. Mm -hmm. So. I am a firm believer that that's probably a big reason why we are where we are today. And I aim to break that. I also play a variety of, of games, but yeah. horror is always home. I don't know if you could tell by the look of me, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I just, I advocate for, for hum, human rights. Like it, life is too short. <laughs> um, and I don't want you know, the generations after me to have to go through the stuff that, you know, I'm going through right now. So that's, that's a little bit about what I do. Yeah. That sounds a lot about what I do. You know, I don't game much on Twitch for me. Twitch is not a gaming platform. I'm one of those people that is trying to make Twitch something that isn't just gaming, which not to say that gaming isn't important. I game, I'm a gamer, but I do mm. that in private. Okay. Yeah. Like my gaming is a private moment for me. Um, but yes, no, that sounds, that sounds awesome. Um, you know, I actually grew up in the opposite type of household. Um, very much an East Coaster where every single time you have a complaint or something that's annoying you, you let everyone around you know, <laughs> and, you know, they have to deal with it. So for me, this is very normal. Um, so can you tell me, like, how long you've been streaming on Twitch? Um, you know, is it your full-time gig? Is it something that you're trying to build into something more? Um, so I actually started on Twitch in October of 2015. Wow. Um, okay, long time. Yeah, and I, it was always a hobby for me because I was like, oh, you know, like I can jump on and hang out with people and they can watch me fail through this this game again and it'll be fine. And um, I never really took it seriously and I, I life didn't afford me the ability to take it seriously right? Um, because there there was a stretch of time where like, everything just kind of hit tenfold. Um, I lost my, my father. I ended up having thankfully a benign tumor, um, in the fatty tissue above my L2, L3. So my lower, my lower spine, um, which left me debilitated. Like I couldn't walk. Um, and then I had a very tumultuous pregnancy that nearly cost me my life. Um, so it was only after I had my daughter and I had lost my job because of COVID that my partner was like, you know what? Like you should probably start streaming again. Cause you really liked it. Um, and I did like, I, it was at that point where things kind of came together and I was like, you know, again, life is too short. I know how finite it can be. Mm -hmm. um how am i going to change this like i want to be the change i want to see um and so i really started utilizing my my platform my little platform to do that um right and it seemed it seemed to resonate and i like where i am with it mm -hmm. because people are actually hearing what i have to say and right. um that just it's it that hits it feels good. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to say that, like, you know, I've seen a lot of these kind of uh, attempts be made. You know, um, it reminds me because I was covering, you know, I'm a political channel from a from a crazy lefty perspective. So I'm constantly talking about these issues. 
And I was reminded of when everybody was like, post, post a, a black square on, on your Instagram. And so my first reaction to these like online, you know, activist moves is to kind of be like skeptical and try to focus more on people that are doing things, you know, in the real world. But what I really liked about what you're doing is that it's an underappreciated part of Twitch. And I kind of feel bad that I haven't done more in this area, which is try to organize streamers together. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm reminded of right now, for example, SAG, which is the Screen Actors Guild, is yeah. doing an election right now for their leadership. You know, they actors and 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 writers in Hollywood and entertainment are working right now to improve their working conditions, to improve their, you know, residuals, to to improve um exactly the type of issues that you're talking about. And with streamers, we're all these kind of like atomized things on our own. Um, and I think the movement that you're doing is, you know, listen, it's always baby steps, but I think I'm really impressed with how much attention it's gotten and how much, um, you know, it's an important issue. Um, can you talk about like how you've been affected by like hate raids and things like that on Twitch? And what is it like being, you know, a, a person of color on Twitch? Oh, oh, <laughs> what is it like? Um, so, I mean, I've always had trolls, as they like to call themselves. Um, yes. <laughs> the whole, you're fat, you're black, you have boobs, like, oh my God, I hate you for it. And it's like, <laughs> all right, dude, like, cool. Thanks for telling me. It's not like I woke up this morning and I was like, oh, I'm black. That's what that is. I'm going to choose oppression today. Right. Um, but. In the last, like, couple of months, it has just gotten really, really, really bad. Um, yeah. It has escalated. Like, the, the first hate raid I got out of the series of all of this was, hey, is a black goth a gigger? Right. And I'm like, okay. Somebody right. literally had to seek me out to create that and right. say it to me. It wasn't the the normal, you know, you're fat, you're black, you have boobs. Somebody mm -hmm. really sought me out to right. make a very pointed attack. So I had shared that um, on Twitter, and that kind of took off a little bit. I was like, y'all, like, don't don't do this. Like, don't don't be petty. Um, a week later, around the same time. Um, I had gotten another one where it was like, this channel has been taken over by the KKK. And like, right. at that point, I was like, y'all really love Friday nights. Cause that was my Friday night stream. I was like, y'all really love Friday nights. Cool. Whatever. Like I clipped it. I shared it on Twitter and that one took off even more. Right. And then the day after there was another tweet that I saw that um, somebody else had got hit with the same the same thing and at that point i was like this is enough we should not be made to feel like we are less than out of you know hate for things that we cannot control right i can't control being black like i didn't ask for like two pumps of oppression on the way out of the womb you know what i mean yeah i didn't ask to be queer but i am so why are my identifiable markers being attacked? And why is this still a thing that we are having to deal with on this platform? So that's when Twitch Do Better became a thing. And I did not expect it to take off the way it did. Let me tell you that. <laughs> it did. It did um, yep. And I was happy because we were really starting to have a conversation. Because I know people have been saying things like this for years. But it feels different this time. Yeah, that's that's the kind of thing that I noticed is, um, you know, the thing that here's here's where I want to have a conversation that's a little bit more substantive with you, because I got to be honest, I don't have any faith in any kind of corporation. They're going to do anything positive without organization and pressure. And so, you know, like I'll give you an example with with Twitch in particular. Uh, this may be controversial, Chad, but be prepared. <laughs> You could get banned and you have absolutely no idea why. 
they will give you a very general reason but they won't say what stream it was they won't say what time and what stream they won't say exactly what the behavior they'll kind of give you this you broke the rule against x Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of creators, especially women creators on this platform, have no clue what is bannable because they will just invent something new and just ban people for it. Now, there's clearly rule breaking and sure, there has to be some standards on Twitch. I think we all agree about that. Mm -hmm. But there's no transparency in the rule enforcement process. And the reason why that is, is because that gives more power to Twitch and less power to creators And because if they started doing transparency, suddenly there's precedent. So if you ban somebody for X reason on this specific, now another creator, if they get banned, can say, well, you banned somebody else for the same thing less. And that's Mm -hmm. not fair. And -hmm. suddenly Twitch would have to have some sort of organized, you know, method where they would have to be consistent. And what they do right now with no transparency, they like it because they can do whatever they want and then maximizes the power of Twitch in particular and it keeps Mm -hmm. creators constantly guessing and on the back foot and kind of precarious and do you think that twitch is going to change uh having that power um i don't think that they really have a choice at this point because i will say if i'm not mistaken i think they did start sending out emails with more specific information on bands um, I think that actually happened about three or four months ago. Okay, so maybe maybe I'm behind on my on my information and I'll and I'll check up on it. But I know I got banned once in December, and uh, the process was like, "Hey, you're banned," and then this is the amount of time, and then you appeal, and there's no like, you don't have an interview, you don't have a discussion. There's nobody saying when you did this, it was this. It's just like, ah, oh, it was this, and you violated this rule. And, yeah, and you know. I was banned for a lengthy amount of time. And so you, if you're relying on this, like I do as your full-time income, that could be pretty devastating. I just posted the link for you. Okay. Did you? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. That actually got announced on the 9th (laughs) of August. Okay. Cool. Um, Let me see this. If if I'm talking about, but do you see that? Like the, the major problem is continually how, Okay, a little bit more clarity. Uh, It'll be where the violation occurred, content title, content date. Okay, I mean, this is... Okay, this is still not... This still doesn't clear up what I was saying before, which is like... Looking at it, uh, it, it doesn't like say this is the in this is the second in the these are the thirty seconds that were rule breaking. It yeah. says this is the stream where you broke the rule. And you could yeah. probably guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's better. It's better, but it's not enough. You know. So what um, do you, so what do you think about and th- and then I'll, and then uh, this is where I really want your thoughts. What do you think about a more permanent streamer organization that is independent of Twitch? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you know, that's why I point to Screen Actors Guild and it has problems and it's certainly not a perfect organization, but something like that where streamers collectively join the group and things, we could get a little bit more transparency, you know, yeah. and a little bit more negotiating uh, power, I guess you would say. Yeah, I, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I think that needs to happen because I don't think... Bam, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was just, I'm sorry for talking over you. Go on. No, no, no. You're good. I was like, what do I do? Um, I, know, I was like saying incoming ban because, you know, Amazon will see me saying this and then it'll be. Oh, yeah. Ban whatever. Hammer. Okay, Amazon. <laughs> Take a back seat on this one. Anyway, um, it's okay. Now I'm getting banned too. Um, I think it's important because I think that people need to understand that Twitch uh, contracts us to provide content to the platform. If we were contracted in any other setting, especially if it was like an IRL setting, which I hate saying IRL, but um, we would expect better. It is for me, it is no different because this is what I do for work. Right. So I know that I'm okay with being a pain in the ass if needed, if I'm not being treated properly. Sure, if I'm an ass, call me out on it, right? Like, totally get that. But if you are literally I- attacking me for identifiable markers that I have nothing to do with, mm-hmm. I'm calling you out. And I'm going to call yeah. out Twitch for not being able to 
afford marginalized, all creators, but marginalized creators specifically for not having proactive tools to prevent these things from happening. Obviously, hate raids are never going to go away, right? They're not, because it, in a world of technology, it's literally just trying to outdo the other. But you can also de-incentivize it, make it harder uh, to do. The fact that we have bots recording IP addresses is absolutely wild to me. The fact that people can literally create and script bots in like upwards of thousands in a small amount of time is crazy to me. I, I think there's a there's a whole bunch of, of things that you said there that are important. One which is like Twitch contracts with us, but they write it, right? And you mm-hmm. you know, you know, when you're like a larger streamer, you know, a medium to large size streamer like myself, not to not to brag, I'm just trying to be objective. No, you're good. Like I have the ability to negotiate a little bit better. And if you're XQC, you get you have a, a, the ability to organize a little bit better and, and demand a little bit more. But mm-hmm. it's Twitch that's really coming to you with the legal team. It's Twitch that's coming to you with the with the contract. It's and with that with the terms. And most of us understand how these platforms work. Like in particular me, I'm a Twitch creator, which means if I lose my Twitch channel, I'm pretty boned. <laughs> like yeah. the vast majority of my work and effort has gone into building up my Twitch audience and Twitch at any point can take that away. And they know how users work, right? They understand that people tend to stick to one platform. It's hard to get them to go to another. So they have a lot of power over us. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get a lot of money for it. Like they charge Twitch streamers, you know, a lot of money from their subscriptions and from bits and from like, there's a lot of, they get a lot of money from the advertising. We get very little in proportion. Um, so when I see you say, hey, develop these tools, that's them having to spend money. That's them yeah. having to have a more, mo- you know, robust moderation staff. That's them having to make a position that is strong on things like hate speech. Um, you know, there's one specific creator who I like a lot who has a global emote, Trihex. And yeah. it is you. What do you think about that? It, it is used to, you know, by pe- by by racists. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever a black person is on a screen in in a, a, a stream, racists will start spamming the Trihex emote in the in the chat. Yeah. And so Stupid. what do you think about what do you think about that in particular and and how Twitch has reacted and Twitch culture um with the way black creators are treated? It's it's kind of similar to Pepe, right? Where it was created as as something that is good. Right. And like harmless and mm-hmm. you give it to the wrong people. You give anything to the wrong people and they're just going right. to run with it. Exactly. Right? Um It sucks. Like I I use the email, but I don't use it in that way. Like, I don't I think that Trihex deserves that at all. I don't, but I, I don't want the emote taken down. Right. It just, it's, it's, that is a fine, like very fine line of like, what's okay. Cause the wrong people are using it for the wrong thing, but there's also a lot of good people who are, who are just using it because it fits, you know, that particular moment. Um, it, it comes down to context and intent and you can follow the accounts and the people with the intent to be malicious. It, they make it very easy to do that easier than they think they do. I will say that. Um, and that needs to be, you know, policed better. I hate using the word policed, but that's, that's what fits here. It needs to be, um, yeah, it needs to be policed better. It really does because it, it, it's not hard to gauge somebody's intent in context of a a chat message because a lot of the times when you see you know the trihex emote it is very quickly followed with something like you know the n-word or telling you know black people to off themselves or whatever it is so i think they just need to actually like buckle down and start banning people I know IP bans are hard to do, especially with the people who are using v- like VPNs, but you, you need to make it harder to do. 
Yeah, so I, I have a lot of thoughts on this. Uh, this is part of why I showed that uh, clip earlier in the stream, which was uh, about the documentary Feels Good Man, which is about Pepe and the artist who created Pepe trying to fight back against people who are far right and in the hate community using the, the, the symbol for their own ends. And it's like... That's, I feel the same way about Trihex. It absolutely would be unex... I agree with them 100%. We should mm -hmm. not get rid of the Trihex emote because people use it to be racist. They will use whatever yeah. black um, uh, emote that we develop in the same way. The problem isn't the Trihex emote. The problem is the people that are abusing it and using it exactly. for racial violence. Um, and, you know, you use the term police. Um, and one of the things that's frustrating is... We have a lot of creators who are larger on the platform who come from quote edgy backgrounds uh, let's yeah. just put it that way so yeah. there is there is a there is a serious link between like these type of communities and the creators and i think twitch has gotten slightly better at cleaning that up but there has to be a you know i'm pretty i i also i know i've been thinking about this conversation so if some of the stories i brought up earlier were to lead into this richard spencer <laughs> right now famous alt-right neo-nazi yeah he has been deplatformed good and because he was deplatformed he has lost his revenue he's lost his relevance and i'm one of those people i am not a free speech absolutist i don't think we need to see holocaust denial i don't think we need to see racism these are discredited they don't have any validity they don't bring anything new to the table they're just used for hate and terror keep it out of this platform period mm -hmm. and you say that we should, you know, police it better. So the question is, who's going to police it? If it falls down onto me and you, we have to develop moderating teams. We have to find people with technical expertise who can program bots yeah. and auto filter. And, you know, I got hate rated um, on Friday. Now, I've been streaming in politics for years, so I'm used to this. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you're controversial like me, you're going to get a lot of hate. And I've gotten a lot of hate and I'm used to it, you know, flipped it over to follower mode for 24 hours, went through, banned everybody. And, you know, I kind of got my moderation team fired up and they did their job. But if I had been a smaller streamer or if somebody who hasn't been accustomed to this, I would have been totally overwhelmed. I might yeah. have even ended my stream. Yeah. So, yeah. There are people within my my own community who who dealt with it for the first time and literally ended their stream in tears. Right. And that's the opposite, you know, um, you know, that's the opposite of what you should do. Uh, and I'm not, not them in particular, but like as a community, yeah, it should not be the responsibility of the streamer yep. to like clean this stuff up. Now it is. And in fact, you can get banned. What do you think about this? The fact that you could get banned because you got hate rated and you didn't moderate yeah. it fast enough. Yeah, I think it's stupid. Like, again, it's a context thing. It's not hard to look at VODs. <laughs> it's really not. It's not. To look at a VOD and be like, oh, okay. Well, they weren't even live at this time when the report came in. So, right. or they were doing their best and they were overwhelmed and they had like, I don't know, two mods right. and however many bots. I feel like... It has gotten overcomplicated for no reason because it really is as simple as having a staff member check a VOD. Well, that means they have to hire a staff member. They have to pay hours and they have to like use money. This is the, this is the one thing that is, you know, why I think that independent organization is a good idea because yeah. Twitch doesn't want to spend money. Yeah. They want to automate things. They yeah. want to have things be as low as expense as possible. They want to skim from our, you know, subs and our bits and they want to make big money, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't want to have like a moderation team. They don't want to have to like manually do this stuff. Um, and if we put enough pressure on them and the consumers demand it and the streamers are organized, maybe we can force them to do it. You know, we can get something for what we pay for, you know, yeah. because their, their customers on Twitch are, are the streamers and the advertisers yeah the audience is the product yeah and yeah, so we absolutely. so we need to be more organized and more uh intentional in how we approach twitch mm -hmm. um so what do you think about what are you going to be doing going forward um and how do you feel about how the event went uh last wednesday um 
I feel pretty good about it. Like it was very cathartic for me, if I'm honest, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm I'm not gonna, you know what? Fuck it. I'll mention names. Uh, especially Asmongold, who had the audacity to call me a nobody. <laughs> anyway, obviously I'm not a nobody. Obviously, the people who were working on this tirelessly, might I add, were not nobodies. We came a long way with very little. Everything was thrown together very haphazard on the back end because we were trying to plan it better. And I'm trying not to like think about the could, shoulda, coulda, woulda, but like we were trying no to plan it better. But, you know, things started getting dangerous because people are getting doxxed. It is no longer just on the platform. Um, I've been getting doxxed. I've had my information screenshotted and sent to me throughout like black Twitch. Um, I've had my children threatened and screenshotted to me. Yeah, see, that's 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 the stuff that happens because once a creator gives permission to their community to hate someone, they dehumanize them. Yeah, and then it happens. Yeah, um, that's I've experienced that too. I know I know exactly what you're saying, and and I think that you know my first reaction, um to it was not as good as it could have been because I I always feel like um we should be acting collectively and democratically and like try and you know and that's a pain in the butt to get mm -hmm. people together and herd cats and and um but I also know that the the cause is incredibly important which is why I brought you on because um I streamed on Wednesday <clears throat> uh, and um I thought about it after, as I thought about it, um, I realized that even though I wasn't part of the decision to like, tell me when not to work, um, it's still more important to do stuff collectively and support moves like this in the future. And I know that there's a lot of people that have con contractual obligations who couldn't stream yeah. or people that, you know, like me that rely on this to live. Mm -hmm. And but that's not a good enough reason to me. Honestly, we need to be working more collectively. And I don't know that not streaming is necessarily the best way. Like if we all use our platforms to push our audiences to demand more, right? Yeah. That would be a good that's a good idea. And maybe yeah. sometime in the future, not streaming and flexing our ex economic power is another good idea. I think you guys yeah. got you guys did very well, uh, according to a report that I saw from the New York Times or from the Washington Post that said that viewership was down by hundreds of thousands, you know, that there mm -hmm. was a that there was a noticeable dip last Wednesday. Um, so what do you think going forward? What should be uh, what should we be trying to do going forward? Do you have any further plans to help develop this movement? Yeah, um, um, and I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Um, I want to organize, like, I'm still trying to figure out, like, how to do this legitimately as I slam my mic. I'm so sorry. Um, no worries. But I want to almost organize, like, a 12 to 24-hour sit-in where you go live, but you're playing a loop of some sort, right? Um, the only issue with that for me is... How are we going to ensure that people aren't going to get banned for not moderating their chat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's the biggest hurdle that I know I'm trying to figure out. And I've, I've had some, you know, I've had people helping me, specifically Shiny Pen and Lucy Everblack, the other two uh, co-founders of the Day Off Twitch movement. Um, and I'm, I'm, working with a advertising firm to kind of see what our play is there. Um, I love the, the platform. I do. I love Twitch. I love the community that I was able to create. I love that, you know, the platform. Yeah. That there are people who have connected with me and literally have said that, you know, hearing me speak on certain things has changed their lives. Like that is so powerful and I want to keep doing that. But just because I love the platform doesn't mean I have to love what they're doing. And I think that's a common misconception, at least what I've seen with people, you know, I don't know, tagging me or like attacking me or getting in my DMs about something 
it's not as simple as just picking up and leaving like my skin color, my gender identity, my sexual preference. That doesn't stay on Twitch. That is not exclusive to Twitch. I could go to YouTube and guess what? They're still suppressing black people. I don't know what to tell you. Like, right. That's, that's a, that's a bullshit, uh, response. First of all, uh, because, you know, from my perspective, that's never going to like leaving is the worst thing that you can do. It's part yeah. of like, you know, as a news show, like, you know, I, I, th- I have a responsibility to cover, you know, Roe v. Wade being overturned, you know, mm-hmm. on, on Wednesday, right? Like balancing the organizing my community and informing my community about those issues versus, you know, me as a streamer and what's good for me, um, is, is a tough thing to, to balance. And when I see someone telling you go to another platform, what they're really saying is, I think that's go actually, Africa. yeah, that's exactly right. I was going to say that is thinly veiled racism. That's thinly veiled. That's the, that's a dog whistle. Yep. That is someone who is not doing the right. racial slurs, but they are doing the Richard Spencer version of it. They're doing yep, a more they're... sophisticated version of you don't deserve to be here. Yeah. This is the white male space mm-hmm. and you're encroaching. Yep. And we don't care that you're uncomfortable. That's, yep. that's what they're saying. Um, right. And I, 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 to be more controversial again, I found it interesting that in this, over the, over the winter, they decided to ban calling people simps or calling people incels. And I'm not saying that those are good. It's not good to insult people and call them names, but I found it interesting that those in particular were singled out. What do you think about that? (laughs) Oh yeah. No, I laughed. I laughed pretty hard because at that point it's like, what am I going to do? scream cry no that's not going to do anything like i literally laughed i'm like you are more concerned about your cis white male populace which okay i get it those are your top creators i have feelings about that but what about you know the black or the brown people on this platform who literally have to go to that block list and manually type in every iteration of the n-word Right. With all the special characters and, you know, using characters from other languages. What about that? But that's what you're worried? Okay. Yeah, sure. you know, and, and here's the thing. Like, for me, what I found so interesting is how bad capitalism, capitalists are at doing capitalism. Mm-hmm. Which, Twitch is less valuable to advertisers. It's less valuable as a, a, a website to, like, normal people when that type of behavior I- exists. Yeah. You know, when it, when users come on the site and they um, encounter that kind of thing, if they're a normal person, many of them will be turned off and never come back. Yeah. So we have actually created an environment where the racists congregate because they're in most normal places. They are pushed out immediately. They are sanctioned. They are punished, socially ostracized. Mm-hmm. And if Twitch is going to step up to the next level, it's a big site. But compared to YouTube, compared to a lot of the other uh, uh, social media sites, it's not that big. Yeah. And I think one of the things holding it back is they've maxed out the white male demographic, okay? You know, even me, who has a, a, a diverse uh, community, is still overwhelmingly white male on Twitch. And But when I go on Twitter, you know, I'm like 70% female. But on Twitch, I'm like 70, 80% male. And it's yeah. not because there's not an audience for this. It's because Twitch has not developed itself in a way that is welcoming to people of color and welcoming to, I mean, they're on the internet. They're using other sites, you know, go on Instagram, go on TikTok. You you see people of color as creators uh, everywhere. It's just on Twitch, they haven't taken enough of an effort in creating a space where these people feel welcome and it just hurts them as a business. Yeah. you know, for all the people who are out there complaining about hot tub streams and, and streamers in bikinis, where are you now? I can tell you right now, advertisers don't mind that. You know what advertisers do yeah. mind? Racist slurs being spammed in the chat. Yeah. Yep. Because so, that's a bad look for them as well. Um, and I think, you know, outside of just financially, uh, you know, trying to take money away from Twitch in order to invoke change. I think people need to understand that reputation is a very formidable form of currency. Um, and I may sound, you know, 
very cocky right now, but the world is watching this. I think it I is. Mean, I think it I've is. had I've I've done reports with with you know people overseas in France and then that side of the world where it took off in South Africa. Like there are media outlets from all over the world who are covering this. Because it is it, racism isn't just in a an a US issue, it is a global issue. I think that people do need to understand that reputation is a, a, a form of currency. And right now, Twitch is really going to have to try to dig themselves out of this one. Because we're a bunch of nobodies. You know, we, we made a lot of noise about not being treated fairly. And well, it's important to keep doing that. You know... I, you know, when I see somebody, I, I think there is a kind of like, um, when you get to a certain size, people tend to be defensive about their, uh, that they have something to lose. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's difficult because you get a lot of people that are trying to come around you, not because they like you as a person, but because you have a uh, cloud or whatever, and you have something that's worth, that's valuable. And so you have this kind of defensive way of trying to protect yourself because as the larger of a creator you get, the more hate you're going to get and mm. the more dangerous parasocial interactions you're going to face. Mm -hmm. um, and for Twitch in particular, I think it's important that we elevate all sorts of different voices. It's something that I've always tried to do is, is bring on creators uh, from diverse backgrounds and from, from different perspectives so that we can improve what Twitch is. Um, make it something more, you know, I, I would, I don't, you know, people that say Twitch and say it's, oh, it, if you're not a gamer, leave are really ruining the website. Yeah, um, they are. You know, YouTube is huge because it allowed and encouraged people to post all sorts of stuff. You know, there's things that I don't watch, right? I don't watch the eyebrow threading videos on, on YouTube, even though I probably need to, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, but the fact that that exists on YouTube makes value YouTube way more valuable, not yeah. just for Google, but for the creators themselves. And I want to see that going forward. So I think we had, I think we had a schedule for an hour. So for maybe my last question for you, uh, mm -hmm. where can people find you? What are you planning on doing going forward and how can we help support the movement in the future? Um, y'all can find me anywhere. It's at Wreck-It Raven. Um, except on TikTok, it's Wreck-It dot Raven. Don't want to talk about it. Very embarrassing. Anyway, um, going forward, honestly, like I'm just gonna keep doing, um, what I've been doing. I'm still gonna activate for people. I'm still gonna speak up for people who feel like they cannot. I know as a minority, like that maybe is not the best thing, but I I can't just sit here, and allow myself and others to be treated this way so i am going to collectively try to find ways to really invoke tangible change on this platform because i don't want to see people hurting here right um and you know obviously like if y'all want to support i think the biggest thing is to elevate the voices of those who are affected by this um even if you don't necessarily believe them, you don't have to call them out. I know. Wait, what? I know that seems hard. Wait, <laughs> what? Might... Why would no right? one believe you if five minutes in any chat will, of a, a female streamer or a person of color will tell you that they're not lying? Watch the but... stream for five minutes. Because, you know, cis, <laughs> cis white dudes tend, have a tendency to want to challenge everything when it, you know, is something that may challenge their privilege. Um... So don't, don't, don't at me with that shit. Cause I swear to God, I will clap back anyway. Nah. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, I think that's an important point because, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing that. And I hope to see you guys carry this forward. Uh, you definitely got the attention. When I saw the article in the Washington post, I was like, damn, they really did. Uh, they really did crush it. So I was, I, and I support you 100% in your efforts. I just hope that we can continue to grow our demands mm -hmm. as streamers, um, you know, into even yeah. more realms, economic realms, you know, streamers should be paid more. Yeah. Uh, 
protections for streamers, you know, more transparency and in, in actions. And uh, so I really appreciate that you, you know, stepping out there and uh, taking the brunt because that takes a lot of bravery and courage to put yourself out there and stand up to someone like, you know, as big as Asmongold or other larger creators. Um, and uh, congratulations on all the efforts that you've uh, done so far. Uh, mods, you can... Um, mods, you can shout out Wreck-It Raven again. I encourage all of you guys and gals, non-binary pals, to follow her on uh, all the platforms. And okay. uh, I hope to see you uh, more on uh, on Twitch. Maybe we can hang oh, yeah. out. Maybe when you're gaming, right? I can just game. You know? I did see that you followed me the other day, and I did say thank you. And I think I gave you P VIP because I have follower-only mode on. But <laughs> no, no saying. worries. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, you know, I really appreciate people doing stuff like this because um, I get frustrated with Twitch. I get frustrated mm -hmm. with with the conversations that are around Twitch. You know, uh, I don't know how you feel about the hot tub stuff, but I, don't I was I was really annoyed by by the the misogynist nature of those yeah. conversations yeah. now that's not my cup of tea of content exactly but who cares my politics stream is not people's content cup of tea you know who cares it's not your job to go in here and police the content the question is is it like criminal is it against the tos if it's neither of those things too bad go yeah. away yeah um I so I'm glad to see so many people like you stepping up and finally like pushing back against the bro culture um that is engulfed twitch and much of silicon valley so thanks for coming on thank you so much um we can have another conversation again yeah because uh, i really want to pick your brain about creating this like almost oh, like streamer's god. guild oh yeah the streamer's guild oh god i you know the one thing the only thing that keeps me back from wanting i don't i think i'm too controversial to be a person that's in the front of this um and I, you know, I'd be honest, I don't, you know, it's hard to trust a lot of other streamers, which is the yeah. other thing that is uh, going to have to be worked on is building um, a, a different culture for people that are mm -hmm. involved in, in organizing for Twitch. Yeah, I agree. I agree for sure. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, everybody. That was um, say bye, wave bye. bye. Uh, that was that was Wreck-It Raven. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that conversation.